say we reduce the collection, okay. reduce the number of partners in the world, uh, change the strategy for the promotion of complicated watches, reduce pricing on gold watches. So there were a lot of changes, obviously. This year, so this has been done. Everything has been done. And actually cleaning inventory also. So this is all done. So now that this is done, what we need to do for 2014, just keep the, the pace going now. OK, the inventory is back. It's done. It's, it's cleaned. So we need to put the uh, new retail identity in all the stores. It's going to take us a year and a half more. And then the retailers are back to ground zero, which means they're in the best possible shape to start and uh, to start all over. Okay. And that's why actually I have to say that 2013 was surprisingly a much better year than expected. This would be might be proven, but we have to wait five to ten years okay. because you know when you make decisions like that, it's not a one-way thing. And a year later, you know if it's good. So far, and especially on the gold watches. The scenario was a good one, and the decision was a good one. A lot of brands are following now. Okay, going forward, let's say five years from now, where we will be. If I manage to bring the business of the gold watches from where it was to maybe triple it, which is our goal, then yes. Nothing fancy, nothing bad, nothing stable, stable. And, and I think they are right now. A lot of these complications are out there, not only for the Marpillier, huh? worldwide, for many brands, including the good ones. So we have to pay attention. Absolutely. That, that, is, uh, that has been uh, something that we spoke about for years, but we've restarted now. And uh, it's, well, we're in 2014. Mm -hmm. Sooner than later. It's, it's there. But you know, it's one thing to say, we're going to make a mechanism that, that would uh, go into a thousand watches, mm -hmm. or we make a mechanism that's going to go into thousands of watches. Of course. In which case, the indus industrialization part mm -hmm. is a lot more complicated yeah. than just making watches uh, at 100 samples. The goal is really to be ready with the first two or three thousand me mechanisms in the next years, not too many years. So since we are getting older, we might see the date better. It's going to be closer to the <laughs> to the top. No, but any any manufacturer should have its own chronograph movement, no doubt. Now, how many do have a chronograph movement today in, in the high end? Uh, yeah, of course. Okay, but that was a priority. It's in working uh, in process, not in progress. And I think we are really happy so far with the results. First of all, we've been dealing with ceramic for quite some time now. And ceramic, black. Except that when you go to the fashion world, ceramic comes in many colors. You've seen white, obviously, but you've seen pink. You've seen uh, baby blues, because, but that's a ceramic which is done in uh, that part of the world. Okay, Ceramic done in Switzerland, because the finishes that we are that we wanted to use ceramic are our own finishes, brushed and polished at the same time, which is impossible to get from Asia. Impossible, it doesn't work. So we've got only one supplier so far, maybe a second one in Switzerland who is trying to do it, but it's major headaches. Now, from black to white, even a bigger headache, because white is even stronger and, and uh, sturdier, yes, harder than, than black. At the same time, we say, you know what? Because it started with the idea of making a woman's watch with a bracelet in ceramic. But that's, if case and, and bezel is already an achievement, a bracelet finished our way, it's even, uh, it's, we're talking about years on that one. It's, no, 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 it's, it's very, very complicated. <laughs> Funny enough, I was in Ibiza last summer, partying on the beach, everything. I saw a lot of white watches on guys, a lot. And I s took pictures and said, hey, we not, might not be so long because I see a lot of white watches now. They were not the high end, but they were white. And funny enough, before coming to the fair, we said, you know what? We might sell, for example, in the US, it's only, it's gonna be only for California or Florida. Chicago, New York, you know, say, let's go. They love it. Now. Are we to keep this in the collection as a regular thing? No. 
No. But it was a sort of, uh, OK, we pushed it even further using ceramic in the diver, in the chronograph, and in the concept. And we'll see what we do with People have done this, have done this, have done that. What about this? Have you seen any white ceramic done by any watch companies in the high end in the last three, four, five years? No. And, and we can say, without a, I could have all the CEOs here around the table, as far as finishes, nobody, nobody does it like that. It's impossible. Not impossible, it's possible because we are doing it. But then you talk about price-wise, price, price wise, it's completely insane. But I would love, actually, I would love to be able at one point to make a, a, a right oak on a bracelet in ceramic, providing that it would respect our codes. I would love to do that. Yeah. I can tell you a story. Now, there is a story to be told about that movement, because it's not only that movement of the chronograph, it's a new movement also as an automatic. So it's two mechanisms. So we spoke about that and said one day, I brought 20 people from Le Loc, so from Renault and Papy, and I, put, I brought 20 people from Le Brassu. I put this whole team at Hotel des Horlogers, that you know, in a room downstairs. We couldn't even fit everybody the right way. We sat down everybody. I took the key of the room. It was 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I closed the door and I said, we are not leaving that room until you found me the solution for the next 10 years. We need new mechanisms, OK? And they have to be perfect. So I'm going to listen to you. We won't leave that room until we can put on the board everything that we need. We left the room at 9.30. And I can tell you that when you keep watchmaker for that, that long in a room, no food. There was no food, no water. Zero. It was very hardcore. This is a true story. Hardcore. Then we had dinner together. And when I said, normally it's 7 to 10 years, I said, I'll give you four. Find a solution. Find a way. Even if you tell me, Francois, OK, we have to do this. We have to keep the, the factory open 24-7 or and, uh, and uh, have a two shifts or three shifts. I don't care. I'll give you four. And during the dinner, some guys were arguing against each other because they were saying, and if we were to do this, and what about doing that? And what about they were already brainstorming a completely different mindset. And Julio came with a proposal that saved us already a year. One year. Something that would normally take a year, now it's one month. And that's going to help us not only for these two new calibers, but for everything else. So it's possible. Now we'll see. So far, we are on track. So the Mapiga has sold a lot of ladies' watches in its history. I mean, it's not new to us. What's new to us is we stopped communicating for almost five to 10 years. So we missed main big opportunities. We started with a new ad campaign. By the way, the new ad campaign has, has, has had to change because we kept, at first, the tagline, to break the rules, you must first master them, which does not apply to women. So we went back to the agency and said, guys, you have to find a new way of saying it, but it doesn't work for women. So the new ad campaign now works. We see that it's, it's fine for everybody. Now the products. But it's one thing also. Our existing Rilo collection or the millinery collection, the way it is now, is OK. The only thing is it has not been exposed to women yet. Nobody knows about us. Nobody knows. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take us one to two years at least to start to exist a little bit. And then we will be able to launch a brand new line, which we are working on. We already the design. Actually, I saw the first prototypes right before I came here. I cannot tell you much, actually, because there, was, there, there is a complete strategy behind, which has to be kept within our own world, as you can imagine. The thing about it is, yes, it, did, it was a major shock for many of the people. And during the SIHH, a lot of people were saying bad things about us because of what we did. And a few months later, a lot of people say, actually, you were so right, and I wish we could do the same. And some of the brands are starting to do the same, because there is a limit up to what level you can go in terms of prices. And I think we are going in the wrong direction. Uh, because we are not a public company, and we can do pretty much whatever we want, whenever we want. We made that call before anybody else, and it was the right move. 
Now, I got lucky on one thing, it's also the fact that gold then went down. Okay, so that, that's my uh, lucky star. It's to have the same thing at, coming at the same time, so it made sense. And at the end, I think that as a brand, we really behave the right way with our clients, with our end consumers. They really appreciated what we did. And a year later, what I can tell you already is we are doubling our sales in gold for 2014, compared to 2013. Nobody has broken the code yet of the Chinese market. And if anybody, if anybody says, oh yes, we know how to deal and we know how to sell and to promote the watches in China, no. On the high-end level, nobody. It's very complicated. You cannot go in that market and say, oh, by the way, I'm going to do like everybody, everywhere else. I'm going to build stores and people will come to my stores and buy the watches. Because there is an education process to start with. Few people know about high-end watchmaking. Then there is the experience process that is not the same compared to many other countries. If you replicate just a boutique that you have in Geneva or in Germany or in uh, Paris or in the United States and say, I'm with the exact same store in China and hope that the result will be the same. It doesn't work. So there are a lot to learn before we succeed. And the good way to do it is to do it slow. That's all. It's, we know today that a lot of Chinese are buying more watches outside of the country that in China. At the same time, they understand more and more and faster what's going on with the market. So what we need to do is to make sure that everything, every single project we do there is perfect. And unless it's a proven concept, it works. We generate sales, we get the appreciation of the people, we cannot move one step further. You respect base number one, then you move to base number two, then base number three. If you want to take everything at once, you're going to be in trouble. So this is where we are. So yes, we took a slower pace to do it. At the end, it's not affecting our business because a lot of Chinese are buying also in many other places. China is extremely important to us, but we're going to do it one step at a time and as perfectly as possible. I'm not going to answer exactly to your question, but I'm going to answer with a sort of analogy to that. When we came to China, we heard on day one, the Chinese consumer doesn't want to buy stainless steel watches. They want gold. They want platinum. They want rose gold, pink gold, yellow gold. But they want gold or platinum. <coughs> they want precious material, and they want round watches. They don't like anything else. You're one. You're two. You're three. So we started to make watches with that shape. Everybody with a round watch, everybody with two hands, and a date, and in rose gold, yellow gold, and pretty much from one brand to the other, you could switch the names. Yes, different calibers, but pretty much the same watches. Last year, no, 2012, 40th anniversary of the Right Oak. We went to China with our exhibit. The following month, the number one watch that was looked at on the internet, yeah. The number one watch that we're looking on the internet, Royal Oak 40th anniversary watch. Which means, and we start to sell the Royal Oak. There will be an evolution. Right now, they say Konograd doesn't sell that much in China. I'm going to talk to you, ladies. Who would have thought, just five years ago, that at one point, a pair of shoes, or 10 years ago, a pair of shoes would go from two inches heels to three to four, five and six inches heels now. And that was not in the trend. You would have said, oh, tomorrow it's going to be five or six inches. You say, there is no way. Nobody's going to work on these shoes. Do that what it is. You said also uh, a pair of shoes was 300 Swiss francs or 300 dollars or 300 whatever it is. Now it's a thousand. People say, there is no way we're going to ever buy shoes for a thousand, 1200. There is an evolution in the business that always proved that if you don't do it, then you have zero chance actually to make it work. But you bring it, it's going to take more time. And at one point, few people will start to wear the chronograph, enjoy the chronograph. Their friends will see them wearing the chronograph. N1, plus one, plus one, and then 10, 20, 50, 100. And that's the way it goes. Today, one of my biggest hopes, we see a lot of women wearing a gold chronograph on their wrist. No need to say the name of the company. And the watch is 34, 35,000 retail. For me, that's the best possible news. You wouldn't see that five years ago. If they do that now, I'm next. 
because at one point they're going to move up to us. This is sure. And the, when the that day starts, then it's game over. And the exact story is Gérald was walking on the pont. Uh, it's called pont, the bridge of uh, whatever I don't even remember in Geneva. Oh, in Geneva. In Geneva, that bridge in Geneva. Pont du Mont Blanc. Maybe it's Pont du Mont Blanc. And at that time, there was a guy coming, being prepped up with a scaphander, okay, to go in the water, yeah. okay. And the scaphander, you have the screws on the thing, and you got this thing, and they and they screw the 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 big like cosmolo to the helmet on the on the on, on the combination combination combina on, on the suit yeah. on the dive suit because you have to have the the pipes, okay, to deliver the air. And you saw the guy walking in the water, and he say, if a man can trust that technique enough to go underwater with just air like that, that should work for one of the watches. It came from safety. He looked at it and said, if the men can trust that thing to go underwater with, that's going to be perfect for a watch. Oh, wow. I was not even aware. She actually showed me his first contract with Audemars Piguet, with the amount we paid <laughs> for the right oak design. This I cannot share. We don't focus on one market. We cannot focus on one specific market. Our luck, actually, in 2013 is because our sales are well spread. So even if it goes down a bit here, it goes up there, and we are fine. And we've got to keep that going on. We cannot put all our eggs in the same basket one way or the other. We have to pay extreme attention to where we sell our watches and who buys them. Because it's one thing to sell in a specific country, but who buys in that country? For example, Switzerland finally became our first country in Europe. Huge revenue in 2013, thanks to the, the Asian, the Chinese that bought also, yes, obviously in Switzerland, but thanks also to a lot of people that bought in our stores, who are coming from Latin America, Middle East, Russia, uh, Eastern Europe, okay, or the United States. So every time we start a year, we say, okay, let's make sure we keep the, the world well balanced. Don't push in a specific direction. Today it's everywhere, it's everywhere. You, maybe you, you won't like my answer, but it's everywhere. When you really think about the number of people that can get access to our watches in the world, you're talking about millions, millions of people who have not even been exposed to high-end watchmaking, potentially. They don't even know it yet. And every day we sell watches to people we didn't know about not only us, but the watchmaking industry. And suddenly they are exposed to it and say, you know what? Cool, I want one, and they start. And we have so many of those out there. So maybe 10 years from now, we'll talk to you in a different way. But right now, everywhere. I'm going to say next year, sound beats Revolution, <laughs> yes. water. Today, or even 10 years before that, you had a lot of people that were not wearing watches, people who don't care about watches, and people who love watches. 10 years later, a lot more people love watches. 10 years from now, a lot more people will love watches, which is not going to stop the growing number of people who don't care about watches. OK? Our mission and our only goal in the watch industry is to make sure that we still appeal with our messages, with our DNA, with our codes, with, our, with everything we do to a younger audience. As long as we've got that, whether we hit one, two, or three out of 10, we don't know yet. But don't forget, my kids, my kids, you have kids? So that generation is already a lot more brand aware than we were when we are kids. As kids, and my background is not, I don't come from a wealthy family, we are okay, we are okay, but not great. I never heard about, I was never looking at Hermes, Vuitton, Prada, Gucci, blah, blah, blah. Kids at 10, being 10 years old, know these brands now. Okay, they know as well, Coke, uh, Apple, uh, Samsung, all these things, it's fine. Okay, but they are much more brand, brand, brand aware. 
And if we do the right thing, we got to come in their radar. When we do something with LeBron James, we appeal to that younger audience. Now we see kids coming in our store and buying watches when they're 18 years old. They ask their parents, say, That's, I want AP for my first watch. If we do that, we, we are OK. If you get older with your audience, you could die with your audience, actually. And I do believe that so far we've done a pretty good job because we kept the momentum going even with a younger audience. And you will see that maybe five, 10 years from now, the following generation will have to have a watch to look cool. Or they will have not to have a watch to look cool. Who knows? But there is a, such a beautiful story and it's such, such a, a special thing that you could get and you inherit and you've got this. There are so many stories to be told about watches. There is only one thing that could kill it. Only one. But this uh, cannot uh, shut that down. <laughs> uh, I, there might be one. If there is one chance for this to happen, there is only one angle. Only one. But this I won't talk about. If we shut it down, will you talk about it? Huh? If we shut it down, will No, you because that's going to come out. <coughs> no, actually, yes. I could because I don't care, because it's true. If you shut that down, I'll let you know. <laughs>